all, Phil Brown here again with some more fusion details. Today we're going to go over how to design some simple soft jaws to be able to utilize. As you can see here in my example above, we have three different jaws we're going to design and we're going to see how you can quickly get these designs and then make a choice on what you want to use and why it's so important on how you constrain your sketch and create your model so that you can adjust it at a later date. So jumping into my Fusion 360 right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my file. In this case, we can usually start and hit save. I'm not gonna actually save that file. We're gonna go in and we're gonna start by creating our sketch and picking our plane. The first most important thing here is, is I'm going to sketch a rectangle to start my actual jaw. So as you can see here, as I can click the first time, drag out, click the second time, I'm actually not gonna click the second time and I'm gonna add my dimensions of two by six. So two by six is a standard size jaw. That being said, that's what we're gonna work with to start. Now we can go in and we can actually create our slot and our slot, for example, is, is we're just gonna roughly place this, again, kind of treating it as if it's modeling clay. And then I'm gonna go right back over that same exact profile and create a second version of that. So now that I have created my slot, let's go in and add our dimensions. So I know I'm going to fit a half 13 bolt through here. So let's go 0.9 divided by two. Let's turn around and do a half inch bolt. Again, that's a half 13, so we're gonna go 550 divided by two. And now I could set a few more reference points. So for example, I want center of where that bolt is going to sit to be 980 from the bottom. Same thing again from the top. In this case, I'm going to hit escape and drag that down so that I can get it inside this line. And now again, center to center. You could go ahead and duplicate by clicking that other dimension. You can see dimension five comes through. If you made a mistake at this point, maybe I've made a mistake. This needs to be 0.9. One neat thing that's gonna happen is when you adjust one, the other one automatically updates. Same thing is now is we need to set where that actual slot is gonna be. So let's create a center line on our jaw. And this isn't gonna be a construction line and you're gonna see why here shortly, but we're gonna pull from that slot line to our center line and that dimension is going to be 3875 or whatever your actual recommendation is. Again, I've made a mistake. The great thing is, is that you could always double click that dimension, go back, divide it by two and bring that within the confines. As you can see here, everything is now black, which means it's fully constrained. So we're safe to go ahead and close everything out and not worry about anything moving. So let's extrude our profile here. So we want that to be a through slot and let's make this jaw one inch deep and hit okay. So you can see my sketch has disappeared. So I'm gonna go back to my sketch palette, turn my sketch back on. I'm going to extrude that inner profile. However, instead of a distance, I'm gonna say two object and that will be my back face. And then what I wanna do is I wanna offset this. So I wanna bring it closer to the front. So if it's gonna be weird at first to get used to typing in a negative 0.2 to bring it back versus an offset of 0.2. But as you can see, we now have that step inside of our profile for where our bolt is gonna align and attach to. From here, I can mirror my body from one side to the other side and hit okay. And now we actually have those slots. So what I did is I made this jaw ambidextrous or the ability to flip it 180 degrees and still reference from bottom the same way. In the event of this jaw here is if I actually needed, let's say a three inch jaw, if I come in and I change this to three and hit enter, you're gonna notice how that slot lengthens out and when I hit finish sketch, those slots become dramatically taller, ready to go. Again, not ideal on a three inch jaw, but this is a good way to build some simpler two, maybe two and a half inch jaws that you could get two uses out by flipping it over. So let's go ahead and open up another file and do another version of this set of soft jaws. So again, as I'm gonna create a rectangle, I'm gonna pick a sketch plane two point rectangle. Again, we're going to start by a six by two. And this time we're going to use our slot tool, but we're actually going to extend our slot all the way down to the bottom. So again, we're going to go from here down to here, pull that out. And then here to here again, and pull that out. Again, nothing wrong if you wanted to dimension that as you go. I like to be able to dimension it 
based on what I'm doing. So again, let's say that dimension is 0.9 to the top. Again, I know this is going to be 0.550 divided by 2. Again, my outer circle, again, will be 0.9 divided by 2. reason why I'm dividing by 2 is because that's a radial dimension call out. And then one final time, again, we have that center line from center to center of our slot, 3.875 divided by 2. So now that we have our profile all over again, we can hit finish sketch. We can extrude our information out. So this way we're going to go ahead, let's go two inches deep on this guy. And then we turn on that sketch one more time. So again, we're going to do that extrude. We have two objects. We're going to offset whatever your dimension is. Maybe make this one negative 0.1 this time and kick that sketch off. From here, as you've seen it before, we're going to go ahead and do our mirroring of this body. Center of our vise. And again, this is now set to be dropped in place. So you could just loosen your two vice bolts, pull this one out, put your next one in, tighten your vice bolts. Again, you don't have to remove the bolts fully as if you did here in this design when we set these up and actually put them in our machine to be used. So now moving on to our third design, right? So now, again, we can start our sketches all over again. You're going to see that this is a repeated workflow that's good to get a habit. Create a sketch, pick a plane. A lot of you may be realizing I don't really pay attention to what plane I'm sketching on. It's not the biggest deal to me because I can always move things around after the fact. So we're going to go ahead and hit F6 to zoom in here a little bit. And we're going to use that slot tool a third time, but we're going to do it horizontal. Again, we're going to make a double profile. And then we're going to actually add a circle. So I use the hotkey C and drag that out to our biggest most area of that slot. Again, we're going to see a couple of repeat dimensions. This guy is going to be 0.9 divided by 2. We're going to use that 550 mark, 0.550 divided by 2. And then lastly, we could set our length of our slot. Let's go ahead and say this is going to be 0.75. Distance from bottom to center. Again, we have that 0.9 marker, whatever you're using. And then finally, we need center line all over again to dimension where that actual is going to sit when we utilize it. So this time you're going to see me do something a little different. I'm going to set this guy to like 2.125. That 2.125, you'll see why I'm doing this here in a second. So again, we have our extrude. We pick our profiles. We're going to go ahead and pull that profile back to whatever it is, maybe one and a half. And we're going to turn our sketch on and create our step in there for our bolt to sit. So again, we have our profile. We're going to go two objects, spin our part around, pick the backside. Again, we can offset with that negative dimension. Let's go negative 0.3 on this one. And then turn off our sketch. So as most of you may be thinking to yourself, I'm going to mirror these. Well, if I actually go in and I mirror this body based on this plane, What's going to happen is where my two bolts are going to sit, first and foremost, are not going to be 375, right? So we're actually sitting at 425 center to center. Also, as you notice, where that bolt would slide through and to the side isn't actually the same. So again, is not only can I not get my bolt through here, but bolting these on there is going to get a little bad at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do to fix that is we're going to delete our actual mirror. I'm going to go back to when I did my initial extrude, and I'm going to hold control and pick the second rectangle. And then from that second rectangle, you can see how I created the full jaw. If I utilize pattern now, based on faces, I can come in here and I can pick all the faces of that profile that we extruded out. In the event that you extrude this profile at a different time, you can actually utilize the feature recognition versus being able to do that as just faces. So again, as we want two of these, and as you can see, based on a negative, we want to go negative 3.75 and hit OK. So now when looking at this, we actually have our through holes aligned and we could measure that. So if you were to loosen those bolts up just a hair, you could then slide this jaw into the vise and over, then tighten it down to reference it.
So the big thing here is, is again, is you have that ability to design multiple jaws multiple different ways. This jaw, for example, is a great example of why we could go in now. And if we actually needed a four inch tall vise, we could actually do a four inch tall soft jaw without moving our slots as reference points. Now on the other vices and different setups you have is again, it's all based on thinking about what is universal across my parts. So again, we just went to a three inch tall. We didn't have to worry about our actual slots moving because there is no slot. They're all referenced from the bottom. And then lastly, on our third one, we actually have that ability that in the event that we didn't want that upper portion to move, I can actually come into this sketch and I could remove that top dimension and then I could just dimension whatever I want that slot to be. So let's say we only want it to be 0.2 and then hit finish. Again, always referencing from the bottom up for when we stack this up and down. If you like content like this, feel free to like and subscribe. Keep in mind, we also are going to be at SHOT Show this year, as you can see up at the top. We're going to be in booth EX328. We will be there all week. Feel free to stop by and say hi.